In this video, we're going to be interpreting transformations from a graph. All right, hi everybody. So uh, this video is really going to be just a response to a question that I got about um, identifying the transformations that we're seeing in the graph here. So what we're doing is we're going to interpret what we're seeing in the graph in terms of the transformations that have occurred. Uh, and the base functions that we're going to use here, we're going to look at x squared, uh, square root of x, and the absolute value of x. So now to, to do this, what we're going to do um, when we look at the graph here, and you can see, and I'll put the little, the little arrows at the end here just so that it's got uh, it's pointing in the right direction there. Um, what we're going to do to start off with here is we're going to identify the transformations that are going to come first, that are the result of multiplication. And so that's going to be uh, the stretches and the reflections here. Now, let's think about what x squared would look like before it had been transformed here. So it's going to have a vertex at the origin. Then if you go 1 over, uh, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4. So the original function looks something like this, comes up, goes through the origin, and there you go. Now, so when I compare that to this new function here, the first thing that jumps out at me is that there's been a, a reflection. Okay, there's been a vertical reflection. This is over the x-axis, which means what I did is I replaced y with negative y, okay? So instead of y equals x squared, I made that negative y equals x squared. And so I, I can bring that negative over. It becomes negative x squared there. So that's where I'm at thus far here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a stretch, okay? And it's it's often going to be the case that the functions that we're using at this level here, um, you can either look for a vertical stretch or a horizontal stretch, and you can kind of cover both at once um, because the stretches can kind of be moved inside or outside the function relatively easily here. So what I want to do in this case, I'm going to look for the stretch, here, and this is how I do it. On my original function here, if I start at the vertex, if I go one unit over horizontally, I should be able to go one unit up to get back onto the graph here. So one unit horizontal, one unit up here. On the graph that I've got, when I start at the vertex, if I go one unit over, I've actually got to go one, two, three units vertically before I get back on the graph. That implies that there has been a vertical stretch by a factor of, of three. Now, I could have interpreted that as a horizontal stretch, but this is much easier, okay? <clears throat> it's much easier to see that um, than, than it is to, to look at, for example, to, to go uh, one unit up, let's say, and see how far over did I go. Well, that's a little bit harder to read off here, but it's, it's a fair bit easier to go, well, I go one unit over and I go three units to go back onto the graph here. So that is a vertical stretch over the x-axis, by a factor of three, which means I'm replacing the y with one third y, okay? So I go one third y is equal to negative x squared, and then I'm gonna bring that, that three up. So y is equal to negative three x squared. Whoops, wow, that looks terrible. Hold on, let me, let me fix that. Okay, and we'll go back, negative three x squared. Now, that takes into account the two transformations that are the result of multiplication, multiplying by negative, multiplying by a factor here. Now what I want to do is I just want to compare the location. So I know that my, my vertex here should be on the origin, but it's not. It's been moved two units to the right and one unit up, okay? So that is a horizontal translation, okay, of two units to the right, and a vertical translation, one unit up. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to replace the x inside my little equation there with x minus 2. Okay, x minus 2. Now, I'm not sure whether or not uh, I need to go over kind of how that looks here uh, and why x minus 2 means 2 to the right. Just like I'm not sure if I need to go over wh uh, why it is that one third y when I do the replacement, it becomes a, a stretch by a factor of three. Uh, that might be something that people are going to have to ask me about later on here. So I'm kind of assuming that that makes sense here. 
Uh, but this becomes y equals negative 3 bracket x minus 2 squared. When I do the replacement, it, like I mean that like exactly the way it sounds. I am going to replace the x. So in the, in the previous function, it was x was being squared and then multiplied by negative 3. So now it's x minus 2 being squared. And I will replace that. Uh, sorry, put that in there and then I multiply by negative 3. To get one unit up, I'm going to replace the y with y minus 1. So in my equation, I get y minus 1 equals negative 3 x minus 2 squared. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that 1 over. And then here's our, our final result. I get y equals negative 3 x minus 2 squared plus 1. Okay. And so the, those are the transformations that I'm seeing in that graph here. Now let's take a look at the square root function. So similar to what we were just doing here, when I take a look at this, this function here, the very first thing I'm going to try to do here is, is figure out what transformations uh, occurred that were the result of multiplication. So the, the stretch and the reflection here. Now, a square root function, okay, this radical function should start at the origin. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is going to be 2. So my function is going to look something like this, the original one, okay? So from there, I can see, first of all, that there has been a horizontal reflection. It's, it's still going up, but it's going up in the wrong direction. So I can see right now that there has been a horizontal reflection, which means, uh, sorry, and this is going to be over the y-axis, which means I replaced x with negative x. And so this means I have y equals the square root of negative x. Then, when I take a quick look at this, I'm going to look for my stretches here. Now, this one here, with the square root function, it's, it's a little different. It's somewhat easier to move um, values in and out of a, a squared function. Just like it is, it's, it's easier to move it in and out of an absolute value function here. It's a little bit more difficult with a square root function. So notice that when you compare the, the origin here, the, that first point there, that if you want to think of it as a vertex, to go to the next point on the graph, I go one unit over, one unit up. If I look at my point right here, what I'm looking for is the next nice, clean point. We're typically not going to give you stretches that are just out of out of control, crazy, weird, fractional numbers here. So I'm looking for the next point, the next lattice point on my grid, which is this one right here. So the assumption I'm going to make here is that this point uh, right here corresponds to this one right here that I'm seeing. Now, how does that compare to the, ver the vertex, that end point there? Well, it's two units over, three units up. Okay, two units over, three units up. It's supposed to be one unit over, one unit up. So what's happened here is the horizontal distance is now twice as big. The vertical distance is three times as big. So there's been a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Okay, and this is over the y-axis. There has been a vertical stretch by a factor of three over the, the x-axis there. So if I want to do a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, I'm going to replace x with one-half x. Remember, it's going to be the reciprocal of the stretch factor I'm looking for. Now, in my function, I mean exactly that. I am taking the square root of negative x. So I'm, I'm multiplying the x by a negative and then taking the square root. Well, now I'm going to multiply... Uh, not, not the x by the negative, but one-half x by that negative. So it becomes negative one-half x, and then I take the square root. Uh, if I'm going to have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, I'm going to replace y with one-third y. Okay, and again, I'm just going to replace it. But just like I did in that previous question, when we do that stretch, what we end up doing vertically is we're going to bring that 3 over, and we multiply that out front so it looks... It's going to look more like this when all said and done. Now, that gets me the shape and the orientation. Now I just got to move it to the right spot. So I'm taking that end point there because it's the easiest point for me to identify. And I'm just going to see how it's been moved. So it's been moved two to the right and four down. 
two to the right and four down here. So that is a horizontal translation, two to the right. And that means we're going to replace x with x minus 2. So in my function here, instead of multiplying x by negative 1 half, I'm going to multiply x minus 2 by negative 1 half. And i got to make sure I put parentheses down uh, around that or else I'm, I'm multiplying by the wrong thing. If the negative 1 half is only in front of the x, I've, I've, I've missed the point there. And then I'm going to do a vertical translation of 4 down, 4 units down, which means I'm going to replace y with y plus 4. And that gets me y plus 4 equals 3, square root of negative 1 half, x minus 2. And then I would bring the 4 over, and so I get as a final result, y is equal to 3, square root of negative 1 half, x minus 2, minus 4. And those are the transformations that I'm seeing in that graph. Now, let's take a quick look at the absolute value function here. And just like before, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the transformations that I'm seeing that are the result of multiplication, the stretches and the reflections here. I know that just an absolute value function all by itself is going to start at the origin and then it's going to have those two branches that each have a slope of either 1 or negative 1. It's going to look something like that. So that's what the original one should look like. Now, I can see right now that there has been a vertical reflection. That the original kind of opens up, but my transformed one opens down. So I know there's been a vertical reflection, okay, over the x-axis which means I replaced y with uh, negative y. So negative y equals the absolute value of x. So I would bring that over. It's the negative absolute value of x. Now I'm going to look for my stretches here, and I do that again by comparing that vertex to a lattice point there. And notice that to get to that first lattice point, I go one unit over, one unit up, just like I've kind of done with the last two here. If I now look at this point here, and I look for the next lattice point that I see. I see it's over here. And notice that that is two units over and one unit up. Okay, so that indicates to me that, that this thing has changed horizontally, not vertically. You could, however, interpret this as a vertical stretch. You totally could. I could compare this point. I could say I've gone one unit over and a half unit up. Uh, but it's it, that's not a lattice point that I'm comparing. I, I could find another way to kind of finagle that to make that work here. But I think the easiest thing to do here really is just to look for that next lattice point and compare it to what I'm, I'm typically seeing is that movement one unit over, one unit up. So now to get back to the graph, I had to go two units over, one unit up here. So that is going to be a uh, horizontal stretch by a factor of two Okay, that horizontal distance went from 1 over to 2 over and 1 up, which means I'm going to replace x with 1 half x. So in my equation, I get negative uh, 1 half x and the absolute values, basically just like what we had before. Uh, now, there's there's been no vertical stretch, or at least I'm, I'm not going to interpret that way. It is very easy, though, to move that 1 half in and out of the absolute values. So I could have seen that as a vertical stretch instead, but I think most people would have interpreted it this way. Um, now what I'm going to do is just compare that that vertex, if you will, to the, the point where it should have been. Notice it's one unit to the left and three units up. So that is a horizontal translation of one uh, unit left, which means I'm replacing x with x plus one. So in my equation, negative, absolute value, notice that in the equation I'm multiplying the x by 1 half, but now I'm going to replace the x, so it's going to be multiplying x plus 1 by 1 half. It's a vertical translation, 3 units up. So I'm going to replace y with y uh, minus 3. So y minus 3 is equal to the negative absolute value of 1 half x plus 1. 
and then I'm going to bring the 3 over, and I get y equals negative absolute value of 1 half x plus 1 plus 3. And there you go. So I hope that gives you, I don't know, a little bit of a template to follow. I know that sometimes these questions can be can be difficult, particularly when you've got multiple transformations in there, and it's it's somewhat hard to separate them out. But if, if you just go systematically, just look for those, those ones that are a result of multiplication, deal with the negative stuff separately than the stretches, and then find that that anchor point that you can you can use to identify what the translations are. It's it's a fair bit simpler.